I wanted to take a moment to explain two uh, different allophones um, of stop consonants. We know that uh, this, the voiceless stop t is often made uh, with the tongue striking the alveolar ridge uh, and then releasing. And there are many different ways that we can actually make um, this phoneme. Uh, I want to highlight one of them now, and that's when uh, t is immediately followed by r in a consonant blend. When t is followed by r, the r will have an effect of pulling the tongue back. What this does is it starts to make the t sound more like ch. So when we say trick or treat, it starts to sound like trick or treat. It starts to sound like the affricate ch. The important thing to know is that it's not the affricate ch. It's just starting to sound like that. Um, we're not going to worry too much about it now, broadly. Just continue to transcribe it as t. Um, later in narrow transcription, we're going to learn a symbol that we can use to indicate that this was sort of a different sounding version of t. The other place that this can happen is with uh, the voice counterpart of t, which is d. Uh, the r can pull back the d and give you uh, a sound that sounds like the, um, the voiced affricate, which would be j. So if I said, don't drink and drive, don't drink and drive, it can start to sound like an initial blend of the affricate plus r, j, j, r. Uh, but it's not. It's just an allophone of d, and we know that um, that ch, r, and j, r are not acceptable initial blends in English. Um, both are just allophones. So when you transcribe, for now broadly, just transcribe them as t, r, and d, r.